Hi class, we are on to the next chapter, chapter 11. Chapter 11 is all about conic sections. Uh, we'll talk about that um, as an overview at the beginning of this section, but this section focuses on parabolas. So a parabola is a type of conic section. Um, we're gonna be talking about parabolas much differently than we talked about them in chapter two and three, right? So, um, in chapter two, when we talked about functions, and three, when we talked about quadratics, uh, we know that a quadratic is a parabola. Um, however, we're going to be focusing on, in this section, parabolas as a whole, and the equation for a parabola is going to be completely different than what we're used to. We're really, it's still going to be a quadratic function in a sense, but it's not going to look like a quadratic as we know it, okay? So, um, Let's just talk about what a conic section is. A conic section is basically a slice of a cone, okay? A cone is like a pyramid, but instead of having a square base, it has a circular base. Um, and for this section, when we're talking about a conic, we're really talking about a cone and its inverted counterpart. So when we say inverted counterpart, we just mean, um, if we turn the cone upside down and place them basically uh, tip to tip, basically like an hourglass. Okay, so we're really what we're looking at is um, an hourglass sort of figure. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, intersecting that uh, hourglass, right? That conic section, that con that cone, with a plane. Okay, and so there's a few ways that a plane can intersect with an hourglass or cone, right? And create a different object. There's actually four different objects. One of them we've studied already, and we're not gonna study any more in this section, um, and that's a circle, right? And then we have what we're studying now, which is a parabola. And then we have what is sort of like a stretched out circle, which we've talked about a little bit, which is an ellipse. And then something that's new to this section that we haven't covered yet so far in this video series or this course reader, which is a hyperbola, okay? So I have my my hourglass, right? My cone and its inverted counterpart and they're placed sort of, you know, tip to tip here. So if I intersect this um, cone laterally with a plane, right? So that it's parallel with its base, okay? I'm gonna get a circle. The intersection of these two things will be a circle, right? Now, if I take this cone and I intersect it sort of at an angle, let's say parallel with one of its sides, okay? Then what I'm gonna get out is what we're studying in this section, which is a parabola, okay? So the intersection of this cone and this plane will look like that, and that is a parabola. If I take my conic section and I intersect it uh, with the plane at an angle that is not parallel to its base or parallel to uh, one of its sides, so kind of off kilter, right? That's gonna elongate this circle and it's gonna give me an ellipse. And for our last case, if I take this conic section and I intersect it so that it is a 90 degree angle with the uh, base, okay, then that will give me a hyperbola. So those are our four conic sections. We've talked about circles quite a bit. We've taken circles, we've moved them left, right, up, and down. We've had different radii. We have talked about the relationship between circles and triangles and our trigonometry. So we've kind of killed the, the circle discussion, right? So we're really going to focus on these three. Parabolas first, and then ellipses, and then hyperbolas. Okay, so for our parabolas, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at them in a geometric manner. So what we've done so far, when we discussed them in terms of quadratics is we looked at them algebraically, right? What do these things look like? What is the standard equation for these things? How do I find the vertex? What it is the y-intercept, right? These are all sort of like algebraic constructs. Although, yeah, we are looking at the graphs in them, that's not really the geometry for a parabola. So here we're going to be looking at parabolas a little bit differently. So we have a line that we call 
a directrix. The directrix, for simplicity, it could be the x-axis, or actually, as we'll see later, the y-axis, but a lot of times it's not, okay? Generally, this is going to be, it really depends on what our parabola looks like, to be honest, okay? So do not think of this as the coordinate axis. This is not the x-axis or y-axis. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, but I don't want you to, like, hold on to that thought and say, this is the x-axis, because most of the time, it isn't, okay? Then we have what is called the axis. We know this from our study of it algebraically as the axis of symmetry, okay? So this is not necessarily the y-axis either, okay? So even though they look like the y, x and y axes because they're perpendicular to each other, that does not mean that that's what they are, okay? The x, this axis, it's the axis of symmetry. If our parabola is centered at the origin or centered at the y-axis, then yeah, then those two things coincide. But don't default to saying, oh yeah, this is supposed to be the y-axis. How come this isn't working? Because that's not going to always be the case, okay? So I have my parabola, okay? I have what's called the directrix. It is a line that lies below the vertex, okay? Or above the vertex. It lies on the opposite side of the concavity. So concavity is the direction that the parabola opens up to. The directrix lies on the opposite side of concavity, okay? The vertex is the lowest or highest point. We know this already. And then we have what's called the focus. The focus is a very important point when it comes to parabolas, as we'll see. Um, basically, if I were to pick any point on my parabola, okay, and draw a vertical line or horizontal line, depending on the orientation of my parabola, from this point to the directrix, okay, and then draw another point from that, or sorry, another line from this point to the focus, the lengths of those two lines are the same. Okay, so let me repeat that. The length from any point on my parabola to the directrix is the same length as any point on my parabola that same point to the focus. And that's our geometric representation of a parabola. So again, just to summarize here, the axis is the line, line of symmetry, okay? The directrix is a line on the opposite side of the direction of concavity. So it's, it's closer to the vertex. It lies on the side of the vertex. It does not intersect with the parabola at all, okay? The length from the directrix to any point is the same as the distance from that point to the focus, okay? That's why it's called the focus, because no matter where I draw a line from the directrix here, it will always have that same direction. So um, we'll see later that uh, this is how we form lots of mirrors, right? Parabolic mirrors. So things like the, the mirrors in your car on the, on the side that say, you know, objects appear are closer than they appear, those are parabolic in form, okay? So we'll see later um, that one of the main uses of parabolas is to create mirrors where everything kind of focuses to a central point. So that way um, we can have magnification, we can have a wider uh, range of view, things like that, okay? So a lot of what's going on here in this section has to do with sort of um, optics. So in fact, the length from the directrix, again, to any point on the parabola is the same as the length from the focus to that point. So let's say that our directrix is located at the equation y equals l, okay? So which makes sense because this is a horizontal line. So it can be anywhere along um, the x-axis, right? It can be any sort of height. So let's call this y equals L, L for line, because it's the directrix is a line, okay? And let's say that the, ac uh, the axis of symmetry is at x equals zero, or the y-axis, okay? Just to keep it simple, we are not going to call this the x-axis, because again, our parabola can be shifted anywhere up and down. So we're going to kind of talk about this in general. So the directrix is the line y equals L. The axis of symmetry is, for this case, on the y-axis, so x equals zero for that point. So let's say that the vertex is at a distance uh, P away from the vertex. I'm sorry, the directrix, okay? Then if the distance from the directrix to the vertex is P, 
then the distance from the vertex to the focus is P. And this should make sense because of what we were just saying here, that the distance from the directrix to any point on the parabola is the same as the distance from that point to the focus. So it just happens to be that the vertex and the focus are in a straight line. So the distance between the directrix and vertex is the same as the distance from the vertex and focus because no matter where I am on the parabola, that is true, right? The distance between the point and the directrix and the point and the focus is the same. So here, it just happens to be in a straight line. So the distance from directrix to vertex is P. The distance from vertex to focus is P. So we can say that the distance from the focus to the directrix is 2P, okay? So let's say that the direct the vertex has a point zero L plus P, which should make sense to us because again, this is L, the distance here is P, so this is L plus the distance of P, so L plus P, and the X value is zero, okay? So the vertex for us is at zero, L plus P. The focus is at zero, L plus 2P, because it's 2P away, right? One P to the vertex and another P to the focus. So let's say that we have a point anywhere on our problem. We'll call it P of X, Y. So just to summarize what we have so far, my directrix is Y equals L. My vertex is at zero, L plus P. My focus is at zero, L plus 2P, because again, each one of those is P away. And I have a point that's located on my parabola that's an X and a Y value. That means then that the distance from P to the directrix, so again, from my point P to my directrix, it is a vertical line in this case, okay? So there's no difference in X's, but only the difference in the Y values, okay? So the difference in X's is nothing because I'm not moving left to right at all, right? But the difference in my Y values is uh, the Y value from the point minus the location for the directrix, which is an L. Here we can notice um, as well, if we just stick straight to the formula, um, that my directrix has all values of X, right? And my point here is X, so I get X minus X, which is nothing, and this is Y minus L squared. Remember, this is the notation for distance, the distance from my point to basically the directrix or L, okay? If I simplify that, this is zero, this is the square root of y minus l squared. So those things cancel. So I get y minus l. I'm keeping this in um, absolute value because it has to be positive, right? So let's say that this was a negative value. Well, it's a distance. So no matter what, distance has to be positive. So we're always going to take the absolute value here to keep that distance a positive distance. So again, the distance from p to l is this um vertical line right here. This is my point P. This is my L. It should be very clear. We're only talking about the difference in Y values and not the difference in L values. So this has a Y value of L. This is a Y value of Y. So the distance is Y minus L. And then we take the absolute value to keep it positive. So the distance from P to my focus, let me just so that we're here, from here to here, Again, it's the same as this distance, right? But we have a point for my focus. I have a point for X, so I can do this algebraically. Okay, the distance from my point P to my focus is X squared, because that's uh, X minus zero squared, so just X squared. So this point to focus, right? Y minus L plus two P squared, and I square root the difference. I know that this distance, the distance from my point to the directrix is the same as the distance from my point to the focus, right? So I set those two equations that I have equal. This absolute value of y minus l is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y minus uh, the difference in y values, right? y minus l plus 2p squared. And so this is a relationship that I have. And I'm going to use this relationship to find the equation for a parabola. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is 
get rid of the square root. Okay. Um, the square root kind of prohibits me from moving around um, within my equations and moving things from one side to the other side. So first thing I want to do is square both sides. Okay. So this is positive. So when I square it, I don't have to worry about it because it's going to remain positive because it's being squared. So now that I have um, things accessible, right, because they're not trapped under the square root sign, I can start to try to combine stuff, expand stuff. So as it stands right now, there's nothing I can really do, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this side and I'm going to expand this side. So when I say expand the side, I mean I'm going to go ahead and multiply this um, out and I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out as well. So this will give me y squared minus 2yl plus l squared. This will be x squared plus and then the same thing, y squared minus 2 y times this thing plus um, this term squared okay so here you see I have my left side being expanded okay and on the right side I have x squared y squared minus 2y times l plus 2p plus l plus 2p squared so I I can start to um, isolate things so for instance I have y squared and y squared I can kind of just subtract that on both sides from one right um, I have minus 2yl I can basically distribute this negative 2y across so if you notice I have a negative 2yl here and a negative 2yl here so those will end up going away as well um, and then this I would like to also expand to l squared plus 4lp plus 4p squared so on the next line I'm just gonna expand all of this stuff out even further Okay, I haven't actually canceled anything, but I just expanded all the way, right? So I have my, um, I distributed this, I distributed this across and I expanded that, right? So now it's very clear that I have some things that are equal on both sides, same sign and everything. So for instance, if I minus 2y squared on both sides, those y squares go away, right? If I add 2yl on both sides, both of those two yls go away, right? This l squared, if I subtract that on both sides, that goes away, right? So there, I can actually clean this up quite a bit. This entire left side goes to zero, and a bunch of things here disappear, okay? So if I clean that up by just um, moving this left side over to the right, this goes to zero, and a lot of things disappear, okay? So now notice I have an x squared, and everything else has a 4 in common and a P in common, right? So what I'm going to do is let's, um, well, let's isolate this X squared. I think that's probably the best thing to do. So I'll move everything else over, anything that doesn't have an X to the other side of the equal sign. Everything here on the left side now has a 4 and a P. So let's go ahead and factor out a 4 and a P. Now... <clears throat> This looks kind of messy, but it's actually very nice. Because I have 4p, I have y minus l minus p, but I know that, if we come up here, l plus p is the location of my vertex. So what I actually want to do is I'm going to factor out this negative sign, okay, within what I have here. So what I have is I have 4p times y minus the location of my vertex, okay, equals x squared. Okay, so using the location of the parabola, I can actually write my vertex in terms of the vertex, okay? Um, and again, this is when the axis of symmetry is at x equals zero, okay? So again, this is the y value for my vertex. So I have 4p times y minus whatever the y value is for my vertex. If my vertex happens to be located at the origin, then this is just 4PY equals X squared, okay? But again, my vertex isn't always at the origin, but for a lot of the problems you're gonna see, it will be, so this actually cleans up very, very nicely when my parabola is centered at the origin, okay? So, <clears throat> this is the equation that we're gonna use for everything in this section, and this is actually only when my parabola is 
um, has an axis of symmetry on the y axis. Okay. All right. So this is the condition. So this is my equation. This is when I have a vertex at zero uh, L plus P and that my directrix is at Y equals L. Okay. All right. So this is the same graph that we had before here, but with everything labeled in terms of what we're now using. Let's come down here. Sorry, you guys. So my vertex is at 0, L plus P. My focus is at 0, L plus 2P. The distance from my point to the directrix is the absolute value of Y minus L. And my directrix is at Y equals L. Okay. So let's say that our parabola has an axis of symmetry at Y equals 0. Okay. So Y equals 0 is a horizontal line instead of a vertical line. So basically we're saying, what if we rotate our parabola 90 degrees so that the axis of symmetry is on the x-axis, right? Because the x-axis is when y is 0 instead of on the y-axis. So here, that means that my directrix is a vertical line, okay? So x equals L would be my directrix. So again, we're rotating a parabola 90 degrees in this case. So then my vertex is going to be located again at L plus P but for x instead of for y. My focus will be at L plus 2p and 0. And so to summarize, my directrix has an equation of x equals L. The vertex is at L plus p and 0. The focus is at L plus 2p and 0. And any point on my parabola is still located at x, y. The distance between uh, my point p, x, y, and my directrix, which is x equals L, is found the same way that we found it when for the other case, um, except everything's going to be turned. So instead of y minus L, it's going to be x minus L. And the distance between my point and focus, I can set, um, I'm going to have x minus my uh, value for the focus, L plus 2p squared. And the difference in y values is y minus nothing, right? Because y is 0. Okay, because the focus, again, is on the x-axis. So setting those two things equal to each other, just like we did before, and solving it, each other down. Because remember, the distance between the point and directrix is always the same as the distance between the point and the focus. So set those equal. Simplify everything down. We have a very, very similar equation to what we had before. But notice that the x and the y values are swapped, right? Instead of x squared is 4py minus l plus p, it's y squared equals 4p times x minus l plus p. Okay, so for this case, this is when my vertex is located on the x-axis um, and the directrix is a vertical line at x equals l. So again, we'll draw a picture for this. This is my directrix, my parabola, the line of symmetry, my vertex, l plus p and 0, my focus is l plus 2p and 0, and the distance from any point to the directrix is the same as the point to the focus. Okay. So lots of formulas going on here. There's kind of two cases, but they're very, very similar to each other. So let's go ahead and do an example. Okay. So let's find the focus, focus, the directrix, and the vertex of the parabola with the equation 6x plus 5y squared equals 0. So before we kind of get started, we kind of got to figure out which case are we in. Well, the square term is with y, not with x. Okay. So when it is centered on the x-axis, we saw that everything kind of had to do with x, right? Vertex at x, focus at x, directrix has an equation of x. And our equation was y squared, okay, because everything was centered at x. So this is the case that we are at. So before we try to like figure out what all these things are, we want to manipulate our equation so it looks like this. Now you might be saying, well, that's kind of a lot. Well, really all we're doing is isolating y squared, okay? So I'm going to get y squared alone and move everything else over. That's the first thing that I want to do. If I had an x squared, I would do the same thing, but I would just have to be aware that um, all my stuff is centered on the y axis. Everything is y, right? Y. All with y's. Okay. When it's an x squared. So since my equation is in a y squared, okay, 
I want to isolate y squared and then I can figure out what my L plus P is and all this kind of stuff. I just want to look at this equation for the right hand side, but first I got to get the left hand side to match up. So I'm going to isolate y squared. I'm going to minus 6x divide by 5. Okay, so this is what I have. So I have y squared equals negative 6 fifth times x. So this is my negative 6 5 times x. I do not have x minus some other thing in parentheses times 4p. So that indicates to me, since it's not looking like a shifted form of x, that this is 0. Okay. In order to have just 4px, right, something times x, that means this added stuff has to be non-existent, right? There's nothing here plus my x. I don't have anything plus anything else. It's just something times x, right? So that means I have something times x. There's no other things being added or shifts or anything like that, right? Okay, so it should be very clear that L plus P is zero. That means that I am centered at the origin, okay? So L plus P is zero. So if we come to our equation here, this is zero. So this is in the form y squared equals 4px. So that means to me then that 4p is equal to negative 6, 5. Okay. So 4p is equal to negative 6, 5. Okay. Again, let's go back here just so that we're clear. 4px, nothing else. So my x is there. I have negative 6, 5, that has to be equal to 4p. Okay, so 4p is the same as negative 6, 5. I would like to know what p is. Okay, so solving for p, divide by 4 on both sides, and this is what it simplifies to. So my p is negative 3 over 10. So my equation for my parabola then turns into y squared equals 4px minus the position of the vertex. Okay, so again, let's come back. Y squared equals 4p times x minus the position of the vertex. Right, my position of the vertex is 0. My 4p was negative 6, 5. So that means that p was negative 3 tenths. So if I multiply this all out, I will come back to what I had here, right? So again, my goal is to put it into the form of the equation. My equation should be y squared or x squared is isolated. I should have my 4. I should have my p. And the position of my vertex should be associated with my x or my y or whatever it is that I'm, I'm using in that case, okay? So my vertex is at 0, 0. My focus is at negative 3 tenths, 0. My directrix is going to be x equals 3 tenths because remember the distance between the vertex and the focus is the same as the distance between the directrix and the vertex. I know that the directrix is positive 3 tenths because the focus lies on the inside of the concavity of the vertex. The directrix lies in the other direction. So if the, vert if the focus is going into the negative direction, compared to the vertex, the directrix has to go in the opposite direction. Okay, again. Vertex. Focus goes one way, the directrix is in the opposite direction. Right? So if my vertex is at zero, zero, the focus moves in the negative direction, then the amount I moved in the negative direction towards the focus, I gotta move in the opposite direction the same amount from the vertex. So that gives me a directrix value of 3 tenths. Okay, 3 tenths. And notice that if I take the directrix and I add to that p, I get out 0. So that's another way to figure out what your directrix is. I could use the equation L plus p has to equal 0. I know what p is, right? Um, so L plus Negative three tenths equals zero. Solve that, and I'll tell you the direction, the the value of l, also. So there's more than one way to, to do this. Just use the equations that we have. So this tells me that my parabola opens to the left, because the focus is to the left of the vertex, which is also why I know the directrix has to be to the right of the vertex in the positive direction. 
So the directrix is going to be on the right. <clears throat> and that's it. Okay, so I find the found the vertex, found the focus, found the directrix, and I have my equation. Really, I was just trying to find these three things, but I had to get my equation into the standard form to do that. Okay. So now let's talk about what's called focal diameter. The focal diameter is basically the distance from one end of the parabola to the other end of the parabola, but passing through the focus. Okay. So um, the name of the focal diameter, it has a, a Latin name, it's called lattice rectum. Okay. So this is the lattice rectum. Okay. This is the focal diameter. So if this, in this case, um, my directrix is at y equals l and focus on the y-axis. So we know that the distance from any point to the directrix is the same as the, that distance to the focus. And since we know that the focus is, lies on the line of symmetry, that means that the distance from this point to the other end is the same as this distance itself. So we know from the line to the height of the focus is 2p, which means that, I'm going too fast, the distance from this point to the focus is 2p, which means that the distance from the focus to the other side of the parabola is also 2p. So the lattice rectum or the focal diameter is always 4p. Okay. So let's do an example. I'll hold this for a second so you can look at this. Okay. So again, we're just using the fact that we know um, about equalities between the distance between a point to the directrix and the point to the focus. So example, so this is an application, right? So let's talk about the Hubble Space Telescope. Really any telescope um, will generally use parabolic mirrors, right? In the beginning of the section, we talked about how we can use mirrors to magnify, um, how we can use mirrors to get um, wider field of views and a lot of times we're using parabolic mirrors for that right so almost all telescopes will use a parabolic mirror if not they use a hyperbolic mirror okay which we'll talk about actually again when we get into hyperbolas so um, at the time of this recording we have really just recently released a new telescope called the James Webb te uh, Space Telescope which is a really really big deal hopefully we get some good pictures out of it um, we're really waiting for the first set of pictures to come back at this point in time. Um, but before that, the Hubble Space Telescope was the main um, telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope uses a type of mirror system called a Cassegrain mirror system, which utilizes two mirrors. Okay, The main mirror is parabolic in a Cassegrain. Not necessarily for the Hubble it's not, but in a Cassegrain mirror system it is. Then we have a secondary mirror that basically flips the focus back towards the main mirror. Okay. And what happens is that we have a hole in the main mirror. And what this does is it, it, it basically stretches what is called the focal length. The focal length allows me to magnify things to a large degree. So the longer the focal length, the larger the magnification is, right? And so what happens with this Cassegrain mirror system is that flipping the focal length back onto the main mirror itself allows the focal length to actually be longer than the container that the um, mirror system is housed in, right? So the length of magnification is actually longer than the whole Hubble telescope as a whole, which is actually very impressive, okay? So... <clears throat> The focal length is the distance from the vertex to the focus. Okay, the distance from the vertex to the focus is the focal length. So what, um, let's back up a little bit, okay. So the focal length is the distance from the vertex to the focus. The larger the focal distance, the larger the magnification. So this is my main mirror. It's got a hole in the middle, okay. So think about it. A donut basically and then there's a second dairy mirror so for all intents and purposes let's assume that both of these mirrors are parabolic so when a light ray comes and hits this mirror it bounces off and it would go to a focal length somewhere out here 
But this parabolic mirror, basically what it does is it reflects it back using the backside of a mirror and it pulls the focal length to be to here. So instead of the focus coming out way out here, it flips it back and it makes it here. So the focal length is from here. It comes all the way this way. Okay. So light can come from this direction and light can come from this direction. And it flips it back in through the middle hole of the donut of the mirror. So this, this parabolic mirror is kind of like a donut mirror. It has a hole in the middle. Okay. And so here we would put a camera, a recorder, whatever it is that we use to take pictures. And that, that's how we get really, really large pictures from a small container, basically. Okay. So the main mirror, again, has a hole in the center, making it basically a ring or a donut so that light can pass through the center to the detector, which is where the pictures are taken. Okay. The Hubble Space Telescope's main mirror has a diameter of 7 feet and 10 inches. That's this, this mirror. So from the center, I'm sorry, from one edge to the other, the distance is 7 feet and 10 inches. The hole in the main mirror is 2 feet. Okay. So the diameter of the hole is 2 feet. So we're going to assume that the main mirror is parabolic. It's not. Okay. It's actually hyperbolic. So we're actually going to revisit this back when we talk about hyperbolas. But the focal length of the main mirror is 18 feet. Okay. So we want to know what is the depth of the main mirror. So how deep does this mirror have to be if it's 7 feet, 10 inches across, and there's a focal length, so from here to here is 18 feet. All right, so we're going to use that information to figure out how deep this um, mirror has to be. All right, so to find the depth of the mirror, we first need to have an equation for the parabola. Right? If I have an equation for the parabola created by the mirror, then I can find the height at 7 feet 10 inches and the height at the 2 feet mark because there is no center. And I can find the distance between those. But in order to even figure out the height, I need to have an equation of a parabola, right? So again, the depth of the mirror is the difference between its heights and its lowest points, right? So if you think about it, it's the depth of a bowl is the difference between the top of the bowl and the bottom of a bowl, right? So it doesn't really matter what orientation we decide to use. I can think of this as being right side up. We're laying on its side. It doesn't matter. We're in space. There is really no orientation in space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the vertex be at zero, zero, because that makes things be easier. And I can use either x squared equals 4py, or I can use y squared equals 4px. It doesn't really matter um, which equation I use, because I'll get the same answers out again. In space, there is no sort of up and down or left or right, right? So um, it doesn't really matter the orientation that I have. It's arbitrary. So let's use x squared equals 4py. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're going to use this because we like using... The way that we derived this equation was we actually derived this form of the equation. Um, and the first example we used was actually from this equation, right? So again, just to kind of go backwards again. So the example we had was a y squared. But when we first derived this, we derived a, uh, a y squared form. I'm sorry, the x squared form. Okay, this is the first derivation we had. So let's do an example. We'll use that so that we have this for the example, because we already did an example with the, uh, the y squared. So, okay. <clears throat> so using the information we have already, okay, we're going to use this form of the equation. We know the focal length of the main mirror. So again, um, just to be clear, we're not actually talking about what's happening when we refract this back. We're really just talking about um, this main mirror and where its actual focal point lies at. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's see here. Okay. So we know from the given information um, that P equals 18, the focal length for the first mirror is 18. So remember the distance from the vertex to the focus is 1p. So I know p equals 18. Um, this gives us the equation x squared equals 4 18y. So that gives us 72y. So x squared is 72y is the equation we have. And we want to look at what's happening to our mirror at um, x equals 2 because that's the location where the mirror starts because of the hole in it. 
and what happens at the edge, which is 7 feet and 10 inches, right? 10 over 12. So we can simplify this 10 over 12 um, and 7 feet to 47 over 6 inches, basically, right? So we want to use our exact value, so we'll keep this as a fraction. Um, 2 feet away gives us a value of y of 1 over 18. Okay. Um, this makes this fraction value here, or this isn't inches, this is still feet, right? Because it's still in feet. It is 47 over 6 feet gives us a value of 2209 over 36 when I plug it in here to be squared equals 72y gives us y is 2209 over 2592 right so here again um, I kind of glaze over this really fast x equals 2 squared will equal 4 right 4 equals 4 times 18y divide both sides by 4 that's just the 1 isolate y and that'll give me y is 1 over 18 so it's actually really nice that this is a value of 2 here because 2 squared is 4 so that's just 1 equals 18y so very easy okay same thing here plugging in 47 over 6 on this side gives me the 2209 over 36 equals 72 divide both sides by 72 this is the y value I get out okay so at 2 feet this is the height of the mirror okay or the depth of the mirror at uh, 40 at 7 feet and 10 inches the depth of the mirror is this obviously this doesn't make any sense to us because they're not exact values but if I find the difference between them it'll tell me the difference in depth between the mirror so if I subtract these two I get this crazy value if I find its approximation it's about 0 0.79668209.8 feet or about nine and a half inches okay so just so that we're clear here seven feet ten inches is about a foot taller than the average door right about a foot and a quarter taller than the average door and so over the length of that it only varies in in depth of about nine and a half inches right and that's that's a pretty large mirror